On the road again I just can't wait to get on the road again The life I love is making music with my friends And I can't wait to get on the road again On the road again Going places I have never been Seeing things that I may never see again And I can't wait to get on the road again On the road again Like a band of gypsies we go down the highway We're the best of friends Insisting that the world keeps turning our way In our way On the road again I just can't wait to get on the road again The life I love is making music with my friends And I can't wait to get on the road again Lorries have been with us for a long time. And it was the 20th century, especially the mid-years of that century, which were to see a rise in the number of commercial vehicles taking to the roads. Since those days, the models of commercial vehicles have come and gone, but to a number of people, the great days of commercial vehicles was that period from the 1930s onwards. And it is from this period that the Ulster Vintage Commercial Vehicle Club preserve and restore models which were once so common on our roads so many years ago. It's a lonely kind of living, never taking, never giving more than moments to remember as I'm passing through today. Satisfaction is in season, but there's roads and other reasons to be moving toward the morning when you find me gone away. I'm just here and you can hold me on the night you need a man It's nicer when I know you understand That the only thing that lingers is the feeling of my fingers As they touch your olive body you mounted in my hand being free and if that don't fit in your planning you better take me off your mind cause the plans that I've been in have ways of coming to an end abruptly when the dream wakes to find I've gone on down the line I'm just here and you can hold me on the night you need a man it's nicer when I know you understand That the only thing that lingers is 
is the feeling of my fingers as they touch your olive body you melted in my hand. To any traveller at the Port of Larne, it seems strange to have such an assortment of lorries on one crossing. True, large lorries are no stranger to the ferry boats, but as some of the more modern vehicles were unloaded, so lorries of yesteryears made their appearance. These were visitors from Britain who had come over to Ulster for the two-day annual run, which would take dozens of vintage commercial vehicles through to Donegal and back again on this now annual trek organised by the Ulster Vintage Commercial Vehicle Club. The first stop for the visitors was the Chimney Corner Hotel complex between Belfast and Antrim. It must have seemed a rather strange sight for diners at the restaurant to see such a number of vintage lorries in a car park. The next morning, these visitors joined with their fellow commercial vintage vehicle enthusiasts at Duncrew Street in Belfast for the beginning of the drive. It seemed an appropriate place to start, especially since the very first lorries had been used in such cities as Belfast to deliver goods. As the ships entered the docks, so it had been the practice for horse and carts to line up to distribute the cargo, not only in the city, but further afield. Sometimes the cargo was put on trains and from Belfast taken to towns and villages throughout Ulster. Whether goods came by ship or railway, they still had to be distributed. And it was here that lorries came into their own. For it was the lorry which was to supersede the horse and carriage. An industrial city such as Belfast, no doubt in its history, must have seen many, many different commercial models down the years. From Belfast, the lorries headed west down the M2 motorway and through Timbridge where they crossed the River Ban and headed towards the town of Maharafelt. I've got this truck driving fever since a boy of only eight years old Riding shotgun up front with my daddy Have to try and shift another load No way truckers' lives not easy On the blazing sun and the driving rain Lonely nights on an endless highway Are enough to drive a man insane Belfast, boy, we've seen it all From Cavan to Derry, Cork to Donegal From London to Paris, endless nights alone A prisoner of the highway from all my entire own Sometimes you get thumbs up and lucky Sometimes you get lucky you're not hit Hey, desperado of the highway Diesel in your veins won't let you quit Turn the dial to a country station Country song will lighten up your load Sometimes it's haggard rambling fever and sometimes it's six days on the road From Dublin to Belfast, boy, we've seen it all 
From Kevin to Derry, Cork to Donegal London to Paris, endless nights alone A prisoner of the highway from all my Tyrone From Dublin to Belfast, boy we've seen it all From Kevin to Derry, Cork to Donegal London to Paris, endless nights alone A prisoner of the highway from all my Tyrone A pilgrim on the highway trying to make his own way home Lorries can trace their history back to the late 19th century when the Royal Agricultural Society offered a prize for a commercial vehicle to carry a ton weight. It was perhaps the knowledge that the modern world was being born which caused men of ideas to promote their own designs for the commercial vehicles. For many lorries it was to be a slow and uncertain beginning. The first type of lorry was the steam traction engine, which was used to pull trailers of goods. But these gave way to steam lorries. But compared to petrol and diesel vehicles, they had a number of setbacks. They were difficult to drive since they had to carry their own fuel supplies, which meant an amount of coal always had to be carried. And they had to stop frequently for water. By the early 1900s, three types of lorries were being developed, petrol, electrical and steam. By 1910, however, it was becoming increasingly clear that the petrol engine was the key for the future. Electrical engines never really caught on, and steam still continued to be used, though in much smaller numbers up to the 1930s. Trailers for sale or rent Rooms to let for 50 cents No phone, no pool, no pets I Ain't got no cigarettes ah, But two hours of pushing broom Buys a eight by twelve four bedroom I'm a man of means But by no means King of the road Third box car, midnight trains Destination Bangor, Maine Old worn out suit and shoes I don't pay no union dues I smoke old stokies I have found Short but not too big around I'm a man of means but by no means King of the road I know every engineer on every train All of their children and all of their names Every hand out from every town And every lock that ain't a lock when no one's around I sing trailers for sale or rent Rooms to let for 50 cents No phone, no pool, no pets I ain't got no cigarettes, ah, but two hours of pushing broom buys a eight by twelve four bedroom. I'm a man of means, but by no means king of the road, king of the road, king of the road. By lunchtime, the convoy of lorries had reached Cookstown, famous for its broad, wide street. The main street is also exceptionally long, and was laid out and built by the early 17th century planter, Alan Cook. But it owes much of its present aspect to the Stuart family. At one time, it was even suggested that Cookstown may become a new capital city. 
but geographically and more important financially, had never reached its high pinnacle. The wide busy market town in its day has seen many lorries, and local people were much taken with the fine array of colourful lorries making their way down the street. Leaving Cookstown, the convoy continued on its road to Oma, stopping for a tea break at the Blue Circle Works at Sandholes. Here there was a chance for the camera, the drivers and the public to get a closer look at this fine display of vintage lorries, and the time for the drivers to have a quick bite and a chat about the route and their own vehicles. First tour there in Holland I was singing on the flower alley of steam Down in front on the ground she was sitting Inquiring how long we would stay I was staring right into her blue eyes And the look she was giving to me Made me want to get close to this lady There was more there I needed to see Do the castle still stand by the river? Is the old town of Dell still sublime? Are the windmills still turning? Is that old flame still burning? Is that little Dutch maiden still mine? So I asked her to come to the 
the backstage She asked me if my time was free And she showed me much more of Harlem Than most men are likely to see She heard me say I must leave her Still stand by the river Is the old town of hell still sublime Are the windmills still turning Is that old flame still burning Is that little Dutch maiden still mine Are the windmills still turning Is that old flame still burning Is that little Dutch maiden still mine Reaching Oma, the lorries soon made their way into County Fermanagh. Famous for its lakes and attractive villages such as Edirne and Kesh. This was indeed scenic countryside. And the old lorries looked their best on some of these roads, which were smaller and probably little changed when lorries such as these were in their heyday. The great push for the commercial lorry was not delivering goods on roads like these, but it was the First World War. This was when, as one transport historian puts it, that lorries came into their own, with the three-ton truck becoming the standard for commercial vehicles. It was some ten years later, in the late twenties, that features such as the pneumatic tyre, windscreens and wipers were developed for the commercial vehicle. Strangely, it was the Model T Ford car which showed the way for the lorry, for Model T Fords were built easily and cost little, and so lorries were to go down a similar road. The diesel engine had been developed on the continent since the 1920s, but it was the Gardner engine based on diesel fuel which provided cheaper fuel for lorries and was therefore much more economical which again was to show to lorry men that diesel was the way forward. Well, I pulled out of Pittsburgh rolling down that eastern seaboard I got my diesel wind up and she's running like I never before As the speed's on I have it all right And I don't see a cop in sight Six days on the road and I'm a gonna make it home tonight I got my ten forward gears on my Georgia Overdrive I'm taking little white pills and my eyes are open wide Hey, you just passed Jimmy in white I've been a-passing everything in sight Six days on the road and I'm gonna make it home tonight Well, it seems like a month since I kissed my baby goodbye Hey, I could have a lot of women but I'm not like some other guy Hey, I could find one to hold me tight But I could never make believing's all right Six days on the road and I'm gonna make it home tonight CC is a checking on down the line. Hey, I'm a little overweight and my log looks way behind. But nothing bothers me tonight. Hey, I can dance on the scales all right. Six days on the road and I'm gonna make it home tonight. Well, my rig's a little old, but that don't mean she's so There's a flame from the stack and that smoke's blowing black as coal. And my hometown's coming in sight If you think I'm a happy, you're right Six days on the road and I'm gonna make it home tonight Six days on the road and I'm gonna make it home tonight Six days on the road and I'm gonna make it home tonight I'm 
by the song When she hears a good one She always sings along And she don't ever worry about what's gone She says good country music Will never steer you wrong And she talks to the truckers with a light Maybe just a little bit more on Saturday night And she knows the good road to paradise And that's just enough to keep the highway bright Well, Mama knows the highway now by heart She can see the rain before it starts When she full of stars, Mama knows the highway now by heart. She can tell Wyoming by the wind. She can tell another trucker by the rig that he's in. She knows how to watch the river bend And she knows where the real south begins Well, Mama knows the highway now by heart She can see the rain before it starts Looking clear through a windshield full of stars Mama knows the highway now by heart Cafe just by looking at the sign. Little old places always share the grand design. Mama knows the highway now by heart. She can see the rain before it starts. Looking clear through a windshield full of stars. By the late afternoon, the lorries reached the border village of Balik. Balik is world famous for one thing, it's pottery. The famous Balik pottery is manufactured from felspar. This mineral is now imported from Norway, though it was originally worked in this area. Angling is another feature of the village, which has brought tourists in. In recent years, the village has prospered and had a moment to speak to a very busy lady, proprietor of the Black Cat Cove pub and president of Balik Chamber of Commerce, Brady Gormley. Well, Brady, you've had a very busy day today. We have indeed, and we were very happy to host the truck vintage rally in the town. Uh, it's great to see crowds like, like this coming to the town. Uh, they really enjoyed the traditional Irish music which we put on in the Black Cat Cove, and we hope to see them in the future. And you have another event on tonight, I believe. We have indeed. The big match between Fermanagh and Donegal is on at the moment, and in there they're cheering for Fermanagh, needless to say. Uh, there's a lot of interest in this match around here because we are just situated on the border with Donegal. Well, Bleak has certainly taken off in the last few years and as President of the Chamber of Commerce, do you find that trade has excelled? Trade excels, but we have to put a lot of effort into it. We have suffered because of the foot and mouth and the restrictions of cross-border border trade. But if we put a lot of effort into things and we always welcome groups like today, like the Vintage uh, Truck Rally, and we put a lot of effort into satisfying our customers. 
And have you found out as, as, as every year progresses that each summer gets busier? Each summer is getting busier and Balik is really being put on the map for its special weekends and the effort that the local business people will put in to welcoming uh, visitors to the town. Brady, thank you very much. I know you want to get back into the bar to see what the score is, serve a few more pints perhaps, I don't know, but all the best. Many thanks anyway. Thank you very much. We'll all be happy if Fermanagh wins tonight. Good night now. The Black Cat itself is renowned not only for a good pint, but is home to a selection of Irish traditional musicians who play on a regular basis. For many people, however, Balik nowadays is on the border, and that of course means cheaper fuel. The Straddle service station, as the name suggests, straddles the border. And the owner, Sean McCrory, has made a fine profit from his lucrative business based on the right side of the border as far as petrol prices are concerned. Defining the border can be quite difficult, and Sean was able to keep me right where I was or where I wasn't. Well, Sean, the border is very hard to define down here, and I know that you know exactly where we are. So you can, can you tell me, are we in the north or are we in the south at the moment? You're in the south at the minute, but if I ha one leg of mine's in the north and the other one's in the south, I'm half and half at the minute. Now, your petrol station, is it in the south? It's in the south. The road is in the north, but the station's in the south. The, the, the border ran along, there was a river ran along here, about a metre from the edge of the tarmac, and that was the border. We changed it round and brought the river round the other way, you know. So in a sense you've changed the border, have you? Well, that's what they say anyway, round here. Now, I believe you're from Tyrone yourself, yeah, and you tell me that you're not going to be buried in Tyrone, you're going to be buried somewhere else. Can you tell me where you're going to be buried and can you tell me why you're going to be buried there? Well, I think I'm going to be buried because the border was good to us, you know, with the diesel and the petrol. So I think I'm going to be buried half in the north and half in the south here, just, just where we stood now, you know. It would be the best visited grave because all my relations will be heading for Bindoran and Rasnu and, and heading for Donegal, you know. So they'll be passing here every Sunday, you know. But then that raises the problem, Sean. Where do you register your death at? Uh, I suppose we'd have to register in both places, north and south. So you'd have a right arm here and a left arm there? Yes. <laughs> do you find at the moment that your trade's good down here? Very good. Excellent. Yeah, very good. And has the number of petrol stations in this area increased in the last few years? Uh, yeah, there's, well, there's a lot of petrol stations getting put up on the border, you know, on the southern side of the border. But... Uh, we, we've been here now about four years, you know. We, we started off with a tanker and a 40-foot container, first of all. And then we developed on since that. Now we're selling petrol and diesel, you know. Because you, you can't keep petrol above ground. You have to put the tanks underground for safety, you know, for fire and that type of thing. With all this money you're making, maybe you'll not end up here at all. Maybe you'll end up in Barbados or the Bahamas or something. We never know where you'll go. But anyway, listen, Sean, thanks for talking to us and taking time out to know today because I know you've been a very busy man. Thank you. Thank you. For many of the drivers, it was a chance to fill up with the cheap stuff. And for mainland drivers, such as Peter Bannister from Lancashire, the price difference was indeed a pleasant surprise. Do you find a big difference in the diesel prices between England and here in the south of Ireland? Yeah, it certainly is. It's about £30 in the tank uh, on 120 litres. So it's obviously worthwhile, yeah. Would you enjoy these prices back home in England? Certainly would, yeah. It would be a big end to all the fuel crisis then, would it? Certainly help, yeah. Well, I'll leave you with filling up here, Peter. and I'm Hope you enjoy the rest of the rally anyway. You're going now into County Donegal, is not correct? All the best now. Thank you. Thank you. I've 
got this truck driving fever Since a boy of only eight years old Riding shotgun up front with my daddy Have to try and shift another load No way truckers' lives not easy On the blazing sun and the driving rain Lonely nights on an endless highway Are enough to drive a man insane From Dublin to Belfast, boy, we've seen it all From Cavan to Derry, Cork to Donegal From London to Paris, endless nights alone A prisoner of the highway from all my entire own Sometimes you get thumbs up and lucky Sometimes you get lucky you're not hit Hey, desperado of the highway Diesel in your veins won't let you quit Turn the dial to a country station Country song will lighten up your load Sometimes it's haggard rambling fever And sometimes it's six days on the road From Dublin to Belfast, boy, we've seen it all From Cavan to Derry, Cork to Donegal London to Paris, endless nights alone A prisoner of the highway from all my entire own Dublin to Belfast, boy, we've seen it all. From Cavan to Derry, Cork to Donegal. London to Paris, endless nights alone. A prisoner of the highway from all my entire own. A pilgrim on the highway trying to make his own way home. Leaving Malik, tanked up with cheap petrol, the lorries made their way towards the town of Ballyshannon. In the 1930s, the two big companies, as far as lorries were concerned, were both American, Ford and General Motors. One subsidiary company of General Motors was Vauxhall. And so it was decided to make lorries in England, to sell to the British market. To further enhance their sales, they decided to give it an English name, so they chose the Bedford. The Bedford became a real winner and swept the market both in Britain and in export sales. The appeal of the Bedford was the ease of repair and the conformity of all the lorries. Men could work with their lorries during the day and if need be, they could repair them themselves at night. The fact that the lorries were given a heavy duty clutch, brakes and battery system made its appeal even greater. Work was also being carried out on larger lorries. In 1923 the Caledon Company produced a 10 tonner, six wheel, three axle truck. The appeal here was that more tyres in contact with the ground meant you could carry more goods. The articulated lorry came in with the Scammel after the First World War. In the 1930s, the Sentinel introduced the idea of an eight-wheeler known as Rigid Eights, and the articulated lorry then became an important part of the heavy haulage scene. In less than half an hour, the lorries had reached Ballyshannon. Ballyshannon is a busy market town set on a hill overlooking the River Erne. 
Two hydroelectric stations supply over 200 million units of electricity to the national network. One of the Kathleen Falls and one at the cliff downstream from Balik. In the car park where the lorries would remain overnight, I got a chance to speak to three gentlemen from Cookstown in what was to prove a very strange lorry indeed. With me now are Derek, Austin and Norman from Cookstown in County Tyrone. Well Norman, I believe this is an AEC lorry from 1963. Can you tell me something about the history of the lorry? Yes, sir. It's a 1963 AEC Mammoth Major Mark V. It was bought new by Shell Max and BP in London and was used on petroleum spirit deliveries for, for, for them for some years. Uh, about 1970 it came over to Northern Ireland. The spirit tank was taken off it and used as a diesel bowser. Uh, the lorry, of course, was bought at that stage by R.J. Maxwell's and son Spittlehill Quarry Coleraine. Uh, whilst the fuel tank was used as a diesel bowser, uh, that left a chassis and cab on which was put a tar spraying tanker, and it was used for some years in that role until we bought it in 1988. That's grand. Austin, had you much <coughs> restoration to do in this lorry? Much work on her? Yes, yeah, a fair wee bit of work to do. It took about three years, I would say. The job was in bad shape when we got it. And Did you work at it in the evening yourselves? Yes, yeah, evenings, and Saturdays, and whatever. Quite a lot of work at the job. And Derek, there's something unique to this lorry. In fact, so unique that we're sitting in it now. I believe you call it the Pit Prop Hotel. Austin calls it that. Does Austin call it that, the Pit Prop Hotel? <laughs> well, can you tell me something? Whose idea was it? Was it your own idea? Well, as a kid, it was at the beginning. Uh, I always wanted some. Uh, I actually wanted uh, telephone poles at the beginning. Norman worked for BT, and I thought of these poles the whole way down, but they were too expensive. And this was a uh, something that was handy at the time to just throw luggage into it to go to a run in Scotland. We were going to. And then it went from there, we made it a bit better, and this, this is what we've ended up with this year. Well, now that you've got your pad, do you go far with it? Uh, we do, yes. Uh, we've had it, the first run we did, I went to Scotland. Uh, the first time, and the next time, Austin and me went to Nottingham, which is a run of... AEC Rally. AEC Rally, which was nearly 900 miles of a return trip there and back. So. I suppose on a night like this, now that you've come here to Valley Shannon, it'll be an early night and a wee cup of tea and straight to bed, will it, gentlemen? Yes, about four or five o'clock in the morning, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> yes, well, would you have this? You're, you may as well enjoy yourself. Yeah. Listen, thanks a we lot. Don't, we don't have to look about bed and breakfast when we have this. That's the, good, that's the <laughs> blessing of it, isn't it? <laughs> Listen, thanks a lot for talking. I appreciate that. Thank you, Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Outside Dorian's Imperial Hotel in Valley Shannon, I was able to talk to some of the organisers of the run. Joining me now is Raymond Walls, President of the UVCVC. Raymond, first of all, what does that stand for? Believe it or not, it actually stands for the Ulster Vintage Commercial Vehicle Club. The club was actually for, uh, founded in the year 1980. And this is our 20th anniversary run today. Uh, we started off from very small beginnings. Uh, there were seven members who founded the club who we're, were very keen on vintage vehicles and since then we have grown and grown. This year, the year 2001, is our biggest event we've ever had. Today we have 84 vehicles out on the run and our first run we had seven vehicles. So you can see from that we have really grown. You have a good number from across the water as well, I've noticed. That is correct. This year we're actually down in numbers because of the foot and mouth. We actually have 20 vehicles here today, whereas last year we had 27 and we have over 10 people who were here last year and couldn't come because of the foot and mouth, but would have been here otherwise. And do you reciprocate? Do you go back to England then later on in the year or to Scotland or anywhere? Quite a few of us go across the water to some of the events. Uh, some of the lads who are not here today are involved with a run in the, it's known as the Heart of Wales run. There are Scottish runs, other English runs, and quite a few of our members go there. I must say I am a poor attender of English events with my vehicle, but I go in person. And what vehicle, just when you come under your vehicle, what actually do you own? The vehicle that is here today is the 1963 Ford Thames Trader Breakdown Truck. I have another vehicle as well, which unfortunately didn't make it this morning, but will be here next, next time. 
Well, I know you want to go back into the hotel to meet all the visitors, so I'll let you go on there, and thanks for talking now. Thank you, Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. See you next year. I also spoke to Mike McGeehan from Draperstown, chairman of the club. Mike, can you tell me something about how your interest in vintage commercial vehicles began? Well, for, from a young age, my father was always interested in commercial vehicles. He, he worked in the country with agricultural tractors and progressed to lorries eventually. And uh, from when I was four or five years old, I was always lorry mad. And our business grew over this last 30 years. We operated a substantial fleet of trucks on our own. But over this last 10 or 12 years, I uh, built up uh, half a dozen vintage lorries, uh, namely lorries that had operated years ago ourselves and restored to the same condition. Some people say to you, you're working with lorries 70 to week, why bother with uh, vintage lorries? But it's just something that's in your blood. Uh, I love driving them. Uh, they can be back breaking and heart breaking and they break down and all sorts of things happen, but it's all par for the course. And it's just an interesting hobby, you know, it's uh, ran lifting your bag of golf clubs and going out for the day. People enjoy this, like it's uh, an expensive hobby, it takes quite a bit to run these vehicles, but uh, we all do it of our own choice. Uh, is it hard to find old lorries about the countryside today? As the years go on, it's getting harder and harder and parts are getting scarce to get. Uh, I've been fairly lucky with anything I have if quite the parts were available for what are restored. But some people have to get parts mid, which again is very expensive. And, but then again, it's people that has a hobby and the interest, it makes all the difference to it, you know. Uh -huh. What lorry have you brought with you today? Have you got a number of lorries with you? I've got three, I've got four vehicles here today, starting with a 1948 AAC Monarch, which is one of our first vehicles that we had at home. I remember my father buying one for £95, bought it in England and shipped home. And that vehicle was operated for maybe four or five years. I actually worked on it as a helper, shoveling, shoveling lime on the back of it. Uh, then we progressed to newer models, you know, a 1957 AEC Mercury. And I've also got a 1965 LED cab blade on Beaver and Triller. And my latest acquisition is a 1968 Ergomatic cab blade on Beaver, which is a joy to drive and a nice, comfortable vehicle. It was originally an, uh, an aircraft refueler. I was now restored to a platform lorry style as, as it would have been period for the time that we have it ourselves. Yeah. And they all made it to Ballyshannon today? They all made it to Ballyshannon. A few hiccups one near went on fire, believe it or not. <laughs> a, a ton of stuff rolling about the, the back of the cab, shorted out on a fuse box and created a fire. You wouldn't believe it, just in a few seconds. And the driver, Tony, I don't know where he has since, he got his hand burned actually getting the fire out, but fair play to him, he managed to get it out. He'll turn up here later on with his hand bandaged, I'm sure, but uh, he did make a substantial effort to get the fire out, and there's no harm other than Tony's fingers being burnt at the end of the day, you know. And my own lorry's developed a missing the engine, but sure, these things all happen, and we just sort of out to go along, you know. That's true. Well, listen, all the best for tomorrow. I know you're going back again tomorrow, and have a good day. Thanks for talking to me now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, now. Joining me now are Craig Matthews and Joe Bradley, two of the men on the road run. I believe they've got, gentlemen, you've got a 1959 Leyland Comet, is that correct? Leyland Comet 90, that's correct, yes. When did you get the lorry, Joe? Well, my father actually purchased it new, so he did. And um, I restored it. I finished it last year, it took me five years to restore it. And did you work in the evenings or just part-time in the restoration? More or less part-time, uh, part-time. Well, if they help this man here now, that's just me. Without this man, it wouldn't have been successful. I wouldn't have achieved it. It shouldn't have been here today now. Craig, you're the mechanic, isn't that correct? Can you tell me some of the work you had to do on the lorry? Well, the lorry, the lorry was buried below a pile of stones in the quarry. So the, the lorry was bought new in 1959. I think it was around about the 26th of December. She came out new 1959. She was used from that till about 1972. She was parked up in the quarry and uh, stones was just tipped over the top of her. So she was right from below the pile of stones and just a real a real mess. So we had a cab to get sorted out for her in the chassis and do the engine up and restore the body on her, using as much of the original stuff as we could possibly get. And it was over a period of, as Joe says, about five years it took to to do it. Well, Joe, no problems in the road down today? Not so bad, I, Well, I was just a passenger, I wasn't the driver now. The driver, well, at least to say about the driver, maybe the better, you know, but... You need to uh, walk home? A mechanic is done all right, you know. <laughs> I can't say much about the lorry, you know. And you intend now, Craig, to be up early in the morning, away to here after 8 o'clock, is that correct? 
Well, now, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't just say up early in the morning or away for eight, but we tried having a deal coming down that I'd drive down and Joe would drive home, but... Well, Joe, you'll have a very quiet night tonight, is that correct? I wouldn't guarantee that. <laughs> no, we're here for the weekend, yeah, no. eh? <laughs> we'll make the best of it, so... Well, listen, gentlemen, thanks for talking to me, and I'll let you go back into your friends inside, and I hope you have a grand day tomorrow. Thanks now. Bye now. Bye. Joining me now is Trevor Haydock, the event secretary of the club. Well, Trevor... You're pleased with today's event so far? Yes, I am more than well pleased with today so far. The weather has been very, very kind to us. It's been very sunny actually after a week's rain. And hopefully tomorrow the weather forecast is very good and indeed and there'll be sunshine again tomorrow as well. And what have you planned? What's the route for tomorrow? Can you take me through that briefly, please? Well, tomorrow morning, hopefully I'll be up about 8 o'clock and we'll have breakfast about half past 8. And for those that are fit to drive, uh, after a heavy night's drinking and one thing or another and letting their hair down, hopefully we'll be leaving here at Ballyshannon at 10 o'clock or as near 10 o'clock as possible. And we will travel in the direction of um, Balik again, where we'll stop at the Straddle Inn and hopefully uh, give your man in the Straddle Inn, Sean, a wee turn of business. Um, the, the fuel price there is considerably lower than in the north and you can please pleased to know that the English men are delighted to fill up there with their fuel one thing or another before crossing back into the north again. So after we leave there we'll travel towards Enniskillen and um, go down the Tlocker Valley area um, towards Dungannon and at Dungannon at approximately about half past twelve we will stop for a short lunch break at the M1 services area. Um, after the short break then we will resume again en route via Cookstown, Moneymoor, Macarafelt and um, Castle Dawson, Tomb, up over Rogery and hopefully um, finish at the Tully Glass Hotel approximately 4.30 where we will sit down for our evening meal and the presentation of the awards, our finishers awards. Well, that sounds a busy day ahead of you, and I know now that you're going back inside and you're going to keep an eye on those drivers, because I'm sure you want as many men on the road at 10 o'clock in the morning as possible. Is that not true? Yes, we have had 86 men running today, and hopefully we'll have 86 men running again tomorrow. <laughs> well, listen, all the best for tomorrow. I know the weather's supposed to be good anyway, and I'm sure you'll have a great day. Thanks now. Thank you very much indeed. The sun's setting here in Ballyshannon, and in the car park with the lorries, I've met John McGee from the Donegal Vintage Club. John, you tell me that the last time there were commercial vintage vehicles here was in 1989, is that correct? That's right. That's right. Well, that's the time the Corporation North Run came down to Fermanagh, and a wee bit of persuasion, they said they would come on into Donegal if we would look after them, So, which in fairness them they did. So when they, no more than this evening, we had a bit of a park up here in the town, they did a, a run of the town and then we headed off for Sligo where they stayed over in the Silver Swan and the various hotels in the town that night and namely the Sligo Park as well. Left there on Sunday morning and headed back into Fermanagh. And I believe you're a vintage man yourself, you have your own vehicles at home, is that correct? That's right, yeah. Namely what well, I have a 1936 Morris 8, as we were talking earlier on about in Venanglia and I have uh, an Austin A40 Farina. Well, in Donegal, there's a growing interest in vintage vehicles at the moment. Yeah, there is, and we have a very big club active going in Donegal town at the moment. So you welcome an event like this to Bally Shannon. It always brings people out, gets them interested. Is that correct? It is right, and you are very welcome here to Bally Shannon this evening. And just a pity we didn't know more about it in time, and we would have had something better organised for you. But it's great to see you here on such a display. Well, I've just left the hotel, and I can tell you anyway that they're certainly enjoying themselves. So listen, thank you for talking, and good night. Thank you very much, and I hope you're back again in the next couple of years. Thanks now. After a hearty meal, the drivers were to spend the night in Ballyshannon. Tomorrow would be another day. But if you wish to see how the lorries got on on day two, you'll have to wait until Turn Back the Years Part 4, which takes us on the rest of the journey and provides more information on the history of the lorry. Let's finish now with a quick preview of Turn Back the Years, Part 4. Papa Top again I've just got time for one more round Set him up, my friend Then I'll be gone And you can let some other fool sit down I'd like for you to listen to a joke I heard today 
From a woman who said she was through and calmly walked away I tried to smile and did a while It felt so out of place Did you ever hear of a clown with teardrops screaming down his face? And pop a top again I think I'll have another round set him up, my friend And then I'll be gone And you can let some other fool sit down again I think I'll have another round set him up my friend and then I'll be gone and you can let some other fool sit down pop a top again 